Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. Today's video is going to be part three of my card making foundations collection. We're going to be talking about cutting, so let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so there are literally hundreds of thousands of different ways that you can cut pieces of cardstock, etc., to make up your cards. I'm going to try and keep this as basic as possible because I feel like if I go too far into it I'm going to get myself confused and then that gets everybody else confused. These are the main things sitting in front of me that I use to cut. So I'm going to sort of go through each one, why I like them, why I don't and, and why I've settled I guess on the ones that I have. So the very first sort of thing I guess that it's, it's the basic is a pair of scissors. Now pros of scissors, you can use them to, to fussy cut, you can obviously cut out any image. For anyone that's ever asked or ever wondered when I've said fussy cut, fussy cut is when you get an image, I'm just trying to find something here that I can cut to show you what I mean. So for example, this is a Planners Anonymous printable I've just got sitting here and a fussy cut is anything where you sort of hand cut the image out. What has happened, I guess, in the, the technology of the world is that you have now got dies and cutting machines that can do this sort of thing for you if you don't enjoy it. I actually kind of like fussy cutting. I don't like doing multiple thousands of things and really intricate little things but I do I do enjoy fussy cutting but for anyone that asks that's what fussy cutting is. So to do that you need a pair of scissors. These are kind of the basic tool because you can do everything that I'm going to show you basically everything that I'm going to show you using a pair of scissors if if you are careful enough I guess is the right one the hardest thing and why I use trimmers is because I can't cut in a straight line I'm just physically impossible of doing so so anyway let's just talk about scissors for a second every person's going to give another a different kind of pair of scissors that they like the best these are the two that I have been with for a really long time they are my favorites obviously everyone will have different ones these were my originals, these are the Kiki K, um, I think they were just called Essential Scissors. I do really like them still. I have another pair that have lost the little um, silicon ring in here that kind of protects your fingers. I like those ones better because they are softer, as in when you open these up, there's a little bit of resistance when you cut. And if you're doing that for a really long time, that actually really starts to hurt your hands. But I don't like those ones because they have lost the silicon and they hurt my fingers. So this is why I ended up with my other pair. They are fantastic scissors though. And the best thing you can do is if you can get a pair that's really good stainless steel. These ones are really good stainless steel as well. They are very easy to keep clean. And this is a question I have had I don't know how many hundreds of times. So I just want to show you very quickly how I do it. Uh, so I grab a piece of paper towel. I grab some eucalyptus oil, just eucalyptus oil that you get from the shops, there's nothing fancy with it, this is just a really big bottle. I grab myself a little cotton bud, dip it in and you rub until you get the adhesive that's stuck there off. And then I just grab another, pa another piece of paper towel or a tissue or a cloth if you don't want to use paper towel and then just rub it off. And it, it's that simple. That's how I keep my scissors clean. It works really beautifully. It doesn't hurt the scissors, doesn't damage anything. And it gets off all that sticky really, really simply. Like I'm not, I'm really not rubbing hard there. It's pretty easy. And then once I've got all of that off, make sure you do the blade as well. Because a lot of adhesive gets stuck there too. Just careful when you're wiping it because you can sometimes go through the paper towel. And then like magic they're clean and then they're also a lot easier to pull apart when they're clean so just things to keep in mind um, keep your scissors keep your blades that's not just scissors but keep your blades clean and they will look after you and they will last a really long time so they're scissors oh sorry that's the first pair the second pair were a pair I invested in based on lots of YouTube watching and lots of recommendations these are the tonic um, haberdashery scissors I think these are the small ones I love that the handles are huge, my hands fit in there really comfortably. I can fussy cut for hours with these and my fingers don't feel a thing. I like that they're sort of big blades still, like they're not quite as long, so I can, but they're still big, like 
I see lots of people with really small blades and I don't know how I don't know how they do that well done to them um, really easy sort of closure there's not real friction there same way to keep clean just rub it over with a piece of with a bit of uh, eucalyptus oil and you'll be fine and these come in different sizes too you can get longer ones or smaller ones the longer ones I think would be really good for cutting like trying to cut in straight lines and cutting edges and stuff so that's something that I may invest in in the future but for now these ones are fantastic and I really really love them so the other thing that you sort of need to invest in you don't have to but I feel like is is a, a staple in any card makers room is a craft knife now I'm just being really careful with this one because I've lost the top so I don't want to throw the knife away but I need to be careful because obviously it is sharp um, there are just some things that scissors can't do. There are some spaces that scissors can't get into. So a good craft knife is going to just sort of help you with those last little things. Uh, this one is a Fiskars one and is on is my favourite. It's called the Soft Grip. Really easy to hold in my hand. Doesn't hurt my hand. If I'm using it for a really long time, it doesn't hurt. So that's the one I prefer. But I do also have a... This is just one from Kmart, I think. The blades are, are interchangeable, the blades are generally very similar so you don't have to worry about getting fancy blades or anything. Um, but this one's just from Kmart and it's just a, a metal stick basically. Um, easy to use, doesn't really need too much of an explanation on how to use a craft knife. But just my biggest my biggest advice with craft knife is go slow. It's so much easier to cut slowly than it is to have to re-cut a bunch if you've already done it. So just something to keep in mind, cut slowly. Okay, they're the basics. From there you move up into trimmers. There are lots of different trimmers and I've tried probably all of them. There are rotary trimmers, there are guillotine trimmers, there are um, there, there's little ones that have like the, the blade on a wire. I could go on forever. These are the ones that I've ended up with and these are the ones that I enjoy. I'm putting a note that that's, this is personal preference, you don't have to like these ones, but these are the ones that I like. This was the 12 by 12 one that I eventually settled down on. This is the Kaisercraft Kaiser Cutter. I think it's 50 bucks. If you can get it at a 30% off sale, which they have basically every month, you're gonna do really well. The reasons I like this one is that it is very easy to get new blades. So when I do need to replace this, it's just a pinch that up, pull this out, and I can replace the blade very easily. They're very easy to get my hands on. Whereas my old Fiskars one, I loved the trimmer, but was constantly running out of blades and couldn't find new ones and I didn't want to have to buy a new trimmer every single time so this was an easy way to be able to replace it um, the other thing that you will need to replace in here is this little track because as it gets sort of cut into it can distort the way that the blade moves back and forth these are very easily purchasable but from Kazercraft as well you also get four runs out of it so you get two on each side and you just flip it over and start again and each one it, depending on how much you use it but it generally takes me like two years to go through one of these I haven't replaced this for a really long time and I think I grabbed some at spotlight once when they were like 50% off on clearance or something I don't know why they were on clearance but they were um, I really like this one I like that it folds out I prefer fold out to um, they have other ones where it sort of folds over this side it's got good edges so that I can sort of shove my cardstock up against it just to sort of show you what I mean you can really put the cardstock up and it's got a good solid edge and you can do that either way depending on which way you prefer to cut it's also got a extender so you can cut up to 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters in here so it's a 12 by 12 um, I use this mainly to cut 12 by 12 pages because I do tend to have a few in here that I like to cut up um, but just anything that's too big to go through the next trimmer I'm going to show you goes in here so that's the Kaiser Craft Kaiser Cutter hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of ones on the market this is just the one that I've ended up with because I can always find the the replaceables to rep like what's the, what's the word that you need what consumables I can always find the consumables which was my biggest problem with the other one this little thing I swear I never thought I, I did get a big guillotine because when I was in my big hunt for crazy like trying to replace my old trimmer I knew I wanted a guillotine. I didn't know this existed. So I had one of those huge big ones. It takes up so much room. It's in my cupboard. It never comes out because it's too damn heavy and it's too damn hard. This thing is a godsend. So this is the Tim Holtz uh, tonic trimmer. I think that's just what it's called. It is a 15 by 
15, or 15 by like if it's an A, it doesn't fit an A4 this way, but it fits an A4 this way. Use me your words. It doesn't fit an A4 in vertically, but it does horizontally, and I can generally make everything work with this. Six by six fit in it fine. Eight by eights fit in it fine. It's just if I go up to that really like the really big 12 by 12s, they don't work so well. I have I very rarely have trouble with this I can sometimes struggle most of the time it is really really easy I'm trying to find a piece of scrap that I can use so I don't waste what I've got I'm just grabbing this bit of pink see look so this one's just a bit higher so it still works you can still use it through here without too much of a problem you're just gonna lose a little bit of the ability to make sure it's perfectly straight but just so you can see this would be sort of Let's actually measure exactly how tall this is so I can tell you. Um, where's that knot? I don't want to get my ruler out, I'm lazy. So this bit of cardstock here is about 22, 23 centimetres. So that's why it's not going to fit in here. But I can still cut it really, really easily. You just sort of slide it through. I try to tend to come down the bottom. You can still cut it fine. Easy as. It's just obviously not designed for that and it's much easier to do it the other way. But just from this, I love that I can get this little strip and I can line it up on my edge here. This is what this tape is for. I use it to kind of butt things up. So if I know exactly how wide I need this to be, for example, when I'm cutting a bunch of card bases, I'll put the card base in, push it right up against the blade, make sure it's 100% in there, put my bit of tape, this is a bit of Planners Anonymous tape that's got a bit of height to it, so it's a bit thicker, and then I can put this in here, and I'm again going to use this one as an example, get your guard back in. But I can cut this straight down and I can just butt it up and know that each time I do that, it's going to be exactly the same. It's just such a time saver to not have to think. And it is it is absolutely perfect. It can also do some of the most amazingly skinny cuts I've ever seen. I can't do this. Where is it? I, I definitely can't do that on my rotary trimmer. Not my rotary trimmer, my um, case of trimmer. And I reckon I can probably even go skinnier than that if I really wanted to. It can just do some absolutely amazing things. I love this trimmer so much. I love the control I have with it. I love how comfortable it is to use and it's, you can just sit here and cut, 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 cut. Absolutely adore this trimmer. So the last thing I'm gonna show you when it comes to trimmers is just something that I think even I overlooked and I don't, I'm not going to advocate for this trimmer as a everyday please use me because I'm awesome trimmer because it's not. This is the We Are Memory Keepers dial trimmer. It's got the same kind of board here but as you can see your ruler guard thing here is exactly is um, in the middle and it's not movable. It's still I don't know why I could never get this to do what I wanted it to do, whether or not now, if I had to play with it, I could get it to do it. But whenever I tried to use the straight cut, it would always end up wonky, and I don't know why. Ah, come here. There we go. So you've got to get the little trimmer out onto the track. And then you could cut down here and I don't know why it would never work it just wouldn't it didn't ever want to seem to cut all the way down and I was pushing really hard on that anyway that's just what it is but what it does do really well is it gives me edging so this one has got a couple of different ones so I'm going to sort of show you really quickly what these ones are again pulling that out so it's got a little um, scallop I guess is the right word it's got a decal. Ooh, you can tell I don't use it very often, can't you? And I find these ones work better. They're still not great. I've got to push a little harder than that. Uh, a decal. This one's like a wave. See, I was pushing really hard there and it still isn't perfect. And then this one is, I think it's a score. Been a long time since I've used it. 
right here. That's a scorer. Not that I would ever need that. And then it also has one here to perforate, which I think is kind of cool and I should use more often. Um, so it kind of gives you a way that you can tear this apart. So if you want to make like vouchers or something, like a bit on your card that cuts away, it does do that really well. For the edges, I find this really, really useful. I, do, I don't use it as often as I should, um, but it is a cool kind of extra little detail to add to your cards. And if you are someone that likes to do things like that, this one's not bad, but just don't rely on it to be straight. I think that's probably my best advice with that one. The other thing that you can do when it comes to cutting, and today I'm just gonna stay with the, what I call your, your staples, are dies. Now, to use metal dies, you are going to need a die cut machine. This one's mine, it's the Big Shot Fold Away. I did originally have a Kazercraft uh, die cut machine, DIY cuts I think it was, and it was fantastic. The only reason I leveled up, I guess, from it was because it didn't quite, the plates didn't quite fit some of the dies that I was using when I started using bigger stuff, and it took up a lot of room. This one is a little bit more compact. It folds out like that. I'm pretty sure I've done a whole review on this, so I will link that down below and you can check it out. Really love this die cut machine. I'm really happy with it. When it comes to die cut machines, there are probably hundreds on the, on the market. You've got your Sizzixes, you've got your Spellbinders, you've got, I'm going through things I know in my head, I'm sure there's 50 bazillion others. They're the two I know off the top of my head. And there's also what we call manual and automatic. So the automatic ones are ones that plug in and that push, you don't have to do all of the cranking and stuff. I would really love, I would love I'm still kind of on the fence. I think I would like an electronic one, but I don't know where I'd put it and it would be a bit harder. And I am going to just touch on electronic stuff in just a minute, but we're just not there yet. So these are my essentials dies. These are the shapes that I use, not on every card, but that I reach for all the time. So I've got my slimline ones. These ones are from Uniquely Creative. They're my slim scallop and my slim stitched. I love a stitched edge and I will use a stitched edge more often than not and that's because I prefer it but I know a lot of people don't like the stitched edge and if you don't that's where something like this one these are the Hero Arts Infinity dies I love these rectangles they're awesome they really are and there's, there's so many in that bag I need to use these more because I reckon I don't use them enough but I have the rectangles the circles and I have the ovals I'd love to get the squares as well I do have the Uniquely Creative stitched, uh, stitched rectangled and scalloped rectangles. Both of those ones are easily accessible and these ones are in Australian sizes. And then that's the Uniquely Creative stitched circles and, sti and scalloped circles. I've also got the Lawn Fawn. I've got Lawn Fawn stitched rectangles, which I think is important to have the US size as well because for stuff like the um, the reveal wheel they all line up with those sizes so just keep that in mind you don't need to have Australian sizes and US sizes but if you your budget will will extend to that then that's a cool idea and then these are the slimline ones I also have the standard the um, the lawn fawn slimline ones as well I have a lot I, I use the essentials what I call these essentials I use them a lot so I'm happy to invest in things like this if it comes down to a choice between like a, a die that matches a stamp set that I can make do with something like this, I will do that instead. Like there's the the best example of it, it's a reveal wheel set from Lawn Fawn. I haven't got it yet, it's on its way. Um, but it's one I've had my eye on for a long time and it's like the, the circles. And the die set that comes with it really just has a bunch of circles. And I'm like, well, I don't need that because I have that. And that's got basically every circle I could ever need to use. So why would I need to? So it's, if, if you're clever about the way you buy your dies, you, you can justify the price of these ones. I will say the Uniquely Creative ones are the best, best price pointed dies I've basically ever seen. The Lawn Form ones are fantastic, I love them, but they can lean, can lean on the expensive side. Uniquely Creative are a fantastic price point for what you get, they're great quality, so keep that in mind. The last thing that I'm sort of going to cover with cutting and not to a big extent because I don't think that this is essential. I don't think it's information that you guys really need to have, but there are electronic cutting machines. 
There are the, there's the cricket. There's the silhouette. Sorry, yes, cricket silhouette and uh, the brother. I have the cricket maker and I have a silhouette portrait. I don't use them as often as I should. That's my statement. If I was cutting out dies, I would lean towards. I would invest in the brother scan and cut because to me, from what I've seen from other people, they are going to do the best job of cutting out all my little critters. So I wouldn't have to buy these anymore. I can see the value in doing it. I just, I haven't decided I want to do that yet. And I have invested so much into doing these already. So to me, it seems kind of useless. Um, the Cricut will cut shapes the best. In my experience, the Cricut will, sh will cut your shapes the best. So if you want to have like a bunch of rectangles and you want to cut them all the same size, the Cricut will do a fantastic job of that. And then you don't have to manually cut these through. You don't have to buy your dies. The Cricut will do it all for you. The Silhouette will as well. I just prefer these. I don't know why. I think it's just because they're, they're easier to do. But the Cricut can then do other things. It can cut vinyl. It can cut fabric. It can do different thicknesses of cardstock which might not be able to work through this and then it can make some funny things. Like I said, the Cricut and the Silhouette are stuff that we don't need to cover today. They are not essential. You don't have to have one. But they are important parts of card making if you do want to sort of start doing other things other than just making cards. If you guys want to hear more information about the Cricut Silhouette and even the Brother even though I don't have one, I can do that. I can do that in another video but I think that's a bit further above where we are today. So there we go. That's all my information about cutting. I hope it has made sense. I hope it explains sort of why I use some tools for some things and other tools for other things. If you have any questions about any of it, obviously you can leave me comments down below or you can find me on all of my socials. I'm always happy to answer the questions. Um, this is all stuff that I've learned from just playing with different things. Uh, so it's, it's experienced learnings, I guess is the right way of doing it. Um, but always happy to take on other people's opinions. So if you have a different opinion, if there's something else you think would be better, please let me know because I'm always looking to find something better as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you for sticking with me for it. Like I said, this was number three of my card making series. My next seri next video is going to be about backgrounds. Oh my goodness, we could go about that video forever. Not just how to sort of what you need to make them, but sort of different tools I've found that help make backgrounds. Uh, so make sure you come back in a couple of weeks for that one. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series as well. I will put a playlist up in the corner so if you want to go and check them out, they will be there. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome rest of your day and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.